Good morning, I'm at uh, Treflun, Treflun. I must remember what it's really called, Treflun Manor this morning, just outside Tembi, I'm by the 15th. And if you get your tee shot right, you're up there on the hill, playing down into a green in a bowl. It's a delightful second shot. Now, I've got three very bad problems with my setup and my swing. And I obviously haven't picked up a club for ages because I'm on my holidays and I've been let off the leash for the day. So I'm going to have to manage myself, manage the course, manage expectations. I can't go out there today thinking I can hit six handicap golf shots. I can't. I'm going to be hitting 12 handicap golf shots. This is a very long course for a holiday course. It's going to be a real test. See you on the first tee. Right, here we go. Now I always take driver on this first tee because I want to get past the stand of trees on the right. As you can see down the left is instant lost golf ball. So that has to be avoided too. And bizarrely that's come out dead straight. I've seen a bounce, so I've still got my ball, but I don't have a shot. All I can do is try and move this somewhere closer to the green. And, well, that's job done, really. That's all I could do. Sand wedge, simple little pitch. And that's short. I guess we're going to need some work. Straightforward chip really, There's nothing particularly difficult about this. Just got to lift the ball onto the front of the green. Ah, I'd forgotten the greens here, I've uh, got some speed on them. So I've got five feet left for the bogey. I certainly don't want to start with a six. Phew. Now if this wasn't uphill, I would instantly switch to the three wood. but I'm going to need driver. And I've come down so steep on that, I've popped it up and it's barely gone 170 yards. So I'm behind the eight ball yet again. Chances of hitting a four iron straight off this light are nil. So we're back into playing the sand wedge. This is not a good start. This time we are on the green and with my back turned we rolled off the green. <laughs> you, you couldn't make this up. Poor Chip only got it as far as the step. We're staring at yet another double bogey and just avoided. So everything is a bit of a mess. Six iron this time, so I stand a better chance of hitting a straight one. Well, it is straight. It's straight right. <laughs> I'm starting to look like an 18 handicap. And there's the view across Tembi and to the sea. There's a little sliver of sea in there. Now, I've got plenty of room here to use a pitching wedge. I don't have to go to sand wedge to clear all of this. Use the slope, bring the ball back to the hole. About five feet past again. I'll get used to the pace in a minute, I'm pretty certain. Camera makes this look shorter, but it is five feet. And we're three over. Right, dog leg left. There's a bunker down the left, and I simply do not have a shot in my bag to shape the drive around it. So we're going three wood. That's the safest option for me. Especially as it means if I hit that, I can't reach the trees. So, I'm sort of managing myself, okay. Five wood here, wind is off the left, that's why I'm aiming so far left. As long as I can get past that end tree, I'm in business. And finally a shot that's gone the right direction. Which just leaves me a little eight in. 
I think I've found a fair way for the first time. That was pushed, it's gone on the wind. We did make it onto the dance floor, but we're some considerable distance away. So now it's down to the lagging. Yeah, that'll do me. That will do me after all of the rubbish I've been playing. Now we go to a par four. Now I've got good memories of this hole and it's surprising how having a good memory makes you relax a bit. So standard little fade, no problem. Bit of a long way out. I didn't hit it very far. We've had a good week of rain here. So you're not getting the run. Good strike, push right again. And then it's down to the wedge and the putter. So I'm sort of managing myself okay. I know I've got problems. I'm going to hit a lot of bad shots today, but I'm just about keeping it under control. Par three next, the green runs away from you. So the choice of the five iron is simply to get past the flag and then I can two put back again. And uh, that wasn't fat, that was a beast. So now I'm facing the same problem. I can't stop the ball. By failing with the tee shot, I'm going to fail with the chip and run. Nothing I can do. Bye bye. Well, it's all a bit of a struggle, but I'm managing it okay. Uh, I need to thank you all for watching the adverts that YouTube put on. This round of golf and this golf cart is being paid for with two months of adverts on YouTube and a very kind gentleman who gave me a £20 super chat. Now, I will warn you about that. YouTube gets a cut. Um, that's why they do it. That's why they push super chats. Don't make a donation. It's because they get a cut of it. So thank you very much, but also be very careful with what you do. In fact, I, I would, I would prefer you just to, when when a video of mine comes up, just let the adverts go by, you know, go and do something else for a minute, a minute and a half, however long it takes, and then watch the video and not do the super chat. But thank you very much. The adverts are paying for this round of golf. Right, a par five that turns in the same direction as my fault. So we might as well use driver. Wish I'd aimed a fraction further left because we have finished in the rough. But the rough here is quite playable. It's sat down a little bit, but it's not like it's in three inches. So that lie is acceptable. And I can get the five wood through it. As you can see here on the left of the green, it drops off. There's a uh, bank made of sleepers. And I don't want to dribble off that. So with my lack of confidence over the sand wedge, I went for a nine iron chip and run. Made it onto the front, didn't quite hit it far, hard enough. But we've got the par and I haven't dropped off the edge of the screen there and been faced with chipping up over the sleepers. So that's managing it. Par five back in the other direction. Now the wind is off the right, so I've got a chance of a bird at only 458. And I dragged it left, so we kiss the birdie goodbye. I've picked a spot between the ditch and the greenside bunker to hit this five iron into. Um, if I'd actually hit it, it was so poor I didn't even make it to the ditch. 
But at 107, you know, the birdie chance is still there. We don't give up. Well, I, I certainly don't give up. If I've got a wedge in my hand, I've got a chance to get up and down, even from 107 yards out. Oh, Simon. And to finish the nine, we've got this absolutely awkward hole. There's a drainage ditch across the fairway just where you don't want it to be. So I've hit a three wood over it, just. I think I might have bounced off the bridge. That leaves me just a six iron out of the rough. There's a couple of bunkers up there to avoid. Right again. Oh dear, I think we need some lessons. Now I've got a little chip here over the edge of the bunker onto a downslope with a green running away from me so the plan is very simple. Pop it up, land in the rough, kill the speed, get a lucky bounce to the left and then dribble down to the hole for a par. A bit like that. Well that is the hard nine over and done with. It all gets a little bit easier on the back, a little bit shorter, so I'm going with five wood down this 300 yard hole. It's a horrible slice, but you know, no harm done. Just an eight iron out of the rough. Yeah, I almost missed the ball there. That swing was awful. I barely hit it a hundred yards, which leaves me this little pitch in the rough again. on the green and this one surprisingly pulls up short but you know we've got this 11 or 12 feet for par yeah, hit it through the break another bogey we're five over 330 so this time a three wood well, that's pretty disgusting Now the wind's off the left here, so I'm aiming left since I'm going to be throwing it in the air with the gap wedge. And it just stayed there. As it does. But it's not far away, 15 feet. And I'm sort of managing myself, I'm managing to get round the golf course without too many mistakes. And so far no disasters. Now one of the iconic holes, two-tiered green, got a very large step in it, about two feet deep is the step, over the valley, two bunkers. It's, it's an invitation, this hole, I love it. It just looks so good, and the gap focuses the mind on where you want to go. Now with a step, there's always this temptation to hit it too hard, so I always resist that temptation, just try and roll it up under the hole, I'll take my par and move on. Nicely done Simon. Now another iconic hole, there is an internal out of bounds all the way down the right, so you can't hit driver out into the other fairway. And there's a huge quarry across the fairway that's so close to you, I I've taken sure. a four iron off the tee. I could have taken a little bit more perhaps. Five wood, I know it's not going to reach, especially from this kind of like first cut there. And we're left with one of these little pitches again. And we're still short. For the last time I played this hole, I hold a good putt for the par. Can I do the same? Uh, yes. I'll tell you one thing, after the week of rain that we've had, the greens here are in excellent shape. So good credit to the greenkeepers for the work they've put in. Little dog leg left to right. 
wins off the left. I wasn't brave enough to actually hit it down the left and finish up in the fairway. So I got 118 from the rough. Gonna just gonna chop up the nine iron. And coming from the rough, there was no spin on that, so it's it's hurtled off the left side of the green. This green is quite steep from right to left. It doesn't show it on the camera. So this is up the hill, and you can see how quickly that pulled to a halt. So it's quite steep down there. So it's no wonder that my, my shot ran off to the left when you've got no backspin. Now another iconic hole. There's a gap in the trees down the left hand side, so you've got to hit it the exact right distance. No shot tracer, wouldn't work. And that gives you a view through the gap. Now it's another one of these holes where it's 50 yards longer from the competition tees, so if I'm on holiday again here, maybe two or three years, I might ask permission to play it full length off the whites, which will put me at 6,649 yards, which will be a bit of a stretch. Oh, Simon, you needed that, mate. I passed three up the hill, a lot of wind. I opted to go down the shaft of the 7-iron, keep it low, and um, just fatted it. So we're short again, and we're leaning on the short game again. Got a little valley to come across, but I'll just lift the ball over that. Just like that, run it out up to about 18 inches par thank you very much thank you mr pitching wedge that's just what i needed 17 longish par four and i surprised myself there by actually hitting my normal little fade and being in the fairway i don't ask me why i chose a six iron having a clue didn't hit it well so we're short we're chipping now sometimes I cut off the tappings when I'm making a video just to try and take a few seconds off a of video and make it short and people say well you haven't made your par unless you show us the tapping so from now on I will be showing you all my tappings well, the best club in my bag today has been the wedge. Round the greens and the sand wedge on occasion. You know, if you want to know how important the short game is, just go back and watch this video again. Watch just how badly I'm swinging and striking the ball. I'll say cheerio here. Just a small matter of 570 yards into the wind to finish off with. I think I need to uh, play a little more golf, practice, and uh, go and see James. Ta-ra. Well, that's a good drive, but it's the 17th fairway. And as I was in the way of other golfers, I kind of rushed this. <laughs> 